What is going on, Colts Nation? Here's Jamal and I, Merrick, your co-host of the Colts cast. Hey, Yo. look, the Indianapolis Colts demolished the Pittsburgh Steelers 27 to 24, beat the brakes off of them. Uh, Joe Flacco came in, uh, relieved Anthony Richardson. I had a lot go down this game, but the Pittsburgh Steelers, they take their first loss of the season as expected. We, we were predicting that going into this game, um, and we won two straight. We are two and two. Look, I, I'm feeling good right now, Jamal. How you feeling? Yeah, I feel we're feeling great around here. I mean, shoot, Colts did something that, uh, like you said, we expected. Glad to see we got the dub in the building and and got some of them Steelers fans who were talking silly. Got them settled straight, but there's a lot of work to do down the road. Hey, but before we get into this, man, we talk about this. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Let us know your mm. comments. Drop your comments below. Let us know how you felt about the game. Hit that like button if you watch the Colts get the dub. Let's get into it, dog. I think we got to start with the elephant in the room, Anthony Richardson. Uh, man, I, I got to say, that first drive, I was not expecting that. I mean, it was like eight plays, 70 yards, three minutes. I It was yeah on point. And <laughs> I, I just – you got to love how we started that game because uh, I <laughs> – when he threw that first throw, I was like, dang, there's a lot of defenders over there. It was a tight window throw mm -hmm. by Anthony Richardson, but he got it right to Pittman Jr. Um, but look, man, oh. <sighs> Anthony Richardson got hurt this game and it it looked bad. I mean, it it anytime I see Anthony Richardson on, on his back, it, it it always looks bad. So flashbacks, boy. <laughs> yeah. I I my heart was beating tachycardia style. Look, he's got to slide, man. I I just I, I don't get it. Like you got the first down, dog. I, I know he wants it. Like he's got a lot to prove, but man, I I was sick to my stomach when he got hit. Um then after his initial, uh, you know, diagnosis of, wow, he, he, he's fine and he got a little bit banged up. He comes back into the game and Sh Shane Steichen calls a, a run play for the him. The very next play. Yeah, his first play back. Yeah, I was like, what? I was like, what the fuck, Steichen? What is going on? Um, not only that, nobody calls fouls on Anthony Richardson. Mm. I, I, I don't understand that. It's that Cam Newton treatment. Hey, you ain't wrong. Because if that was any other quarterback, 30 pounds less, maybe a little lighter skin tone. All, all I'm saying, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, hey, we, 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 saw, we saw the flag as soon as it, how, how fast they threw it for Justin Fields when he got hit. So, I mean, that's just a perfect example. Well, and he's a little lighter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, no, he, he's not getting any, any you know protection from the refs. Uh, they just let this man get killed. It, it's not fair. But I am kind of glad they they pulled him out for this game. I I didn't want to see him take another hit, potentially make that uh, injury more severe. But he he was rocking and rolling this game. I mean, he was three for four, seventy one yards, average seventeen point eight yards per attempt. And look, I'm gonna keep it a buck here. I'm pretty sure he leads the NFL in yards per attempt. So like Richardson's got it going right now. Um, of course, yeah, those three carries on the ground for twenty four yards. I liked what they were doing with Anthony Richardson in this offense, um, but unfortunately, um, we lost him for the game. Probably not for the season. Looks like he just got banged up a little bit, hobbled. Um, let's let's go stretch out that hit. Let's let's get him ready for potentially the next game if we if we want him to to play in the next game um, because we got to go into into Jacksonville. You know, we can't win there. That's an L, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. The first win. Uh, we won't talk about that right now, though. I don't know what you thought about it. Uh, you know, Joe Flacco came in, former comeback player of the year. Um, he threw for two touchdowns, no interceptions, uh, took two sacks, 168 yards. Uh, pretty efficient, 16 for 26. Um, Jamal, what do you make of this quarterback play? So I think as far as Richardson goes, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, when he ran back out from out of the tunnel, I mean, people were going nuts. So like, I, and I believe that was after the second hit. I may be wrong. I really may be wrong, but I think that was after the second hit he took. He ran back out of the tunnel. Um, and that's when I was like, oh, he may come back in because Flacco was obviously in the game. But then they announced him out a little bit later. So um, mm. if, if that's what I'm thinking about, I, I don't think he's as banged up as, as we may think he is. 
um, because everybody kind of went nuts when he ran back out of the tunnel. Uh, but neither here nor there. Flacco came in. He did his thing. It, well, I guess I shouldn't say neither here nor there because the one thing I will say, you know, like you said, Richardson was doing his thing when he was in there. But the only thing I think it's really hard for me to sit back and, like, understand or make full sense of is I feel like every time he goes out, like these past three times he's gone out over the past two seasons, his numbers have been solid to start off. And we just unfortunately don't know how they were going to finish. So I feel like you have such a skewed thing because his games he completes, we're sitting here and we're talking like, yo, this ain't it. Like we see the issues here. We see the issues there. But then the games he's not completing, we're seeing these like inflated numbers and just like, yo, what What if he would have stayed in the game? What could have happened? So it's super frustrating. Yeah, just say you want Joe Flacco. That's all you got to say. Because oh, there have been people on X saying, oh, oh Joe Flacco, yeah, he just <laughs> – yeah, oh, yeah, come on. Let, let's let's call a spade. A spade. Yeah, Joe Flacco do for two tuds. So let let's 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 call a spade a spade with that. Okay. Um, what does that Joe mean? Flacco, Joe Flacco came in and did what he needed to do to get us to get this dub. So um, he should start moving for. I don't know why you're trying to get me rowdy and get other people <laughs> rowdy. All I all I said was that. Um, all I said was that. Unfortunately, we haven't had a chance to see Richardson if he can complete with the compete. What these numbers? Man, he's yes, he can, man. Today, yeah. you, you should have saw that comeback. We were down what twenty three to zero last year against the Los Angeles Rams. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> so Eric's feeling himself right now. Um, I'm hey. not. We're not. This this is the Colts. This is the Colts hype episode. They got the dub. I'm happy with uh <laughs> with what happened with Flacco. I agree that they definitely need to start calling these plays for Richardson. They need to start calling these fouls, but he does also need to slide whenever he can. Or if he's going to take these hits, man, lower the shoulder. I don't want to see him give up his body. It's too big of a person to give up your body at that time. Like lower shoulder and and and, and deliver the blow. Don't take the blow every single time. But um, you know, yeah. like I said, Flacco came out and did his thing when he needed to, and then the Colts prevailed through on the offensive side of the ball. And that's what I want to see. Something's not right because Richardson is getting hurt more than any other mobile quarterback I've ever seen before. So on one hand, you could say he's injury prone, but on another, it's like. The way he's taking the hits, you're you're absolutely right, Jamal. Spot on. Just like, what do we do? I mean, he took a hit, then spun around, took a hit in the back. Mm -hmm. Like, can't do that. The second hit, he slid probably a little too late, but also got hit in the head. And oh, no personal foul there. But <laughs> um, yeah, I wonder how many fans want Joe Flacco starting now. Uh, I mean, my man was moving like molasses in the pocket, but hey, he got the job done. Um, Jonathan Taylor also got banged up, so mm -hmm. not looking great right here, but he was looking sharp as usual. Uh, 21 carries, 88 yards, and touchdown. I uh, even got some work in the receiving game with three catches and 20 yards. Jonathan Taylor's doing what Jonathan Taylor does. He he's he looks really good. He's one of the best, he's one of the best running backs in the league, but just once he gets to that second level, he makes people he makes people miss. Um, got to love him there. Hope he's, you know, just got a minor injury. Um, but we'll probably know some more information next week. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I mean, this was a good day overall for, uh, for Michael Pittman Jr. He's kind of been, mm. he hasn't been, he's been a non factor for us uh. in the game. So he finally got a little love today. What did he go for? Six receptions for 113 yards, I believe it was. He finally, finally showed up today to play a little bit. So, Say it again, uh, Jamal. Yeah, I said this was this is finally he finally showed up to play today. <laughs> well, that, that big payday you got to. Well, the passing game kind of showed up today. Yeah. Um, I mean, mostly it was when Richardson uh, stepped out, but you know, Pittman. So had, you want Flacco to start so Pittman can get no, 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 no. Pitt, Pittman had like hurt. forty or fifty yards on that first drive with Richardson. So yeah, I mean, Pittman was eating before and after. Like he, he, so, Flacco should start. He was getting seconds and thirds, huh? Yeah, he said Flacco should start, no, y'all. I didn't. I yeah. Didn't See? Right, keep going, keep going. I'm just giving See? that Eric treatment. Go ahead. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you you actually was hating on Anthony Richardson. Mm -mm. But anyway, um, yeah, Pittman had a really good day. I uh, like to see it. I like to see it from our uh, number one paid receiver, Josh Downs. I thought played him in, you oh. know, just just from a technical standpoint. I, I Yeah, Josh Downs was balling. We were definitely missing him, man. I the route running is just is just crazy. Route running wizard looks uncoverable at times. It's just I love him in one on one situations. Uh, shout out Josh Downs. Um, don't don't get hurt anymore, man. We, we <laughs> I really need you. Um, so 
The only reception by a tight end today happened to be a touchdown by the tree, Drew Ogletree. Uh, <laughs> one, one catch, 15 yards, touchdown. Got to love it. Colts tight end getting a touchdown. Um, Alec Pierce didn't get his usual bombs today, but he was targeted. Um, so, you know, they're, they're always – it looks like Alec Pierce is going to get at least one to two bombs a game, whether he completes it or not or gets a DPI. That That's, that's saying something, but – that that's Alec Pierce's role, basically, especially when we got a fully healthy receiving squad. It's I I'm OK with that. You know, uh, I didn't expect Alec Pierce to be our, our number one, but um, A.D. Mitchell. That's your boy. You want to talk about him? Yeah. So I got to go back and like watch game film. Obviously, like I've said, 110 times over y'all, you know, at the game, they don't ever show any replays unless it's something that's going to benefit the team. So I can't ever see like any of his replays to see whether whether or not he's actually able to break open or they're missed pass, you know, like off passes or he's not going for the ball or what it is. So I can't really speak on like his effort going for the ball every single time. What I will say, though, is like, I mean, it's it's unfortunate because I do think there are times where where the ball's in his general like catching radius that he doesn't come down with it. Um, but I I honestly do not know. Tell him, tell it like it is. Unless I and like I said, I I will go back and watch him and I will talk about that on our next episode because Eric, I mean, you said a couple weeks ago, you said you see why he fell back to where he didn't draft because he was kind of lazy, you know, and kind of sloppy with stuff. Hey. Again, I haven't had a chance to go back and watch him, so I can't speak on that. But um. But please enlighten us on what you what you got what you saw. So I will say, uh, Ad Mitchell is not getting the most accurate passes thrown to him. Um, it seems like every game, like something's getting overthrown, underthrown, something. He, it, it's it's impossible to catch a ball that that's not in your catch radius. Like I I, I will say. Um, but man, I. I don't know. It looked like he don't want it, man. Like I see Anthony Richardson, like he actually wants it when he's on the field, like, and we can sit here and say he should slide and stuff like that. But like that man wants to play. He wants to be out there. He wants to show everyone what he's made of. Ad Mitchell, I, I don't know. Like yeah, Jamal. Like I said last week, he's a rookie, so benefit of the doubt. Like this is this can't be him forever. I mean, it could be, but like like you said, Jamal. I don't know. It's always like, oh man, like he, it always seems like he's running the wrong route, like every single game. It always seems like that. Why are we always overthrowing only him? I like so, something's not right. And maybe, maybe I'm reading into this wrong, but something's not right with AD Mitchell. And it's fine. I mean, we're, we're four games into the season. Yeah. He's a rookie. It is fine. But the expectations of, of NFL receivers, coming in as a rookie man they want you they want you to translate into the nfl very quickly um but i gotta say man i'm a little bit concerned about him i i just hey that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> eric ready to throw in the towel and it's only been four weeks I but no that. yeah that's, that's what it sounds like but no i will say this though you know during during training camp and all this we saw some great catches from him you know we saw a lot of great effort from him um, and of course, some of these are on like, I don't want to say like backyard plays, but they're, they're maybe on some more dumbed down plays because when fans, you know, when we're at training camp and all this stuff, they're not, they're not showing the entire playbook. They're showing like they're kind of regular routes and things of that sort. So I will say that maybe we did see some inflated, in, you know, inflated stuff watching some of the basic plays, because then if we fast forward to a couple weeks, you know, during training camp, we, what do we hear? Alec Pierce is having the greatest training camp ever. And I'm like, in my eyes, I'm seeing these, I'm seeing the replays of AD. And I'm like, how is Pierce having this great camp when AD is literally catching anything that is within a four foot range of him? So clearly, I mean, you know, we're just innocent bystanders out there watching, but we're not seeing the same thing that the, 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 that the coaches and so on and so forth are seeing. So maybe there is small issues. Again, I'm not going to put all that on him because he was a third round pick. That is a rookie. Second round pick. Second round pick. Sorry. Yeah. Second round pick. That is a rookie. So just like any other rookie, I would expect that we had some problems with Pierce, you know, his rookie season. I think that Downs had a little bit of a different situation because Downs was, he, he's a different style receiver that's kind of made for this. That was that pop pass. 
uh, for Gardner Minshew. I don't know if if, if we'd have had Richardson back there last year with Downs have had as an elusive of a year before he hit his rookie wall. You know what I mean? So I think some of those things are kind of different where we didn't have the talent at quarterback to actually get those skits on the place. But I will fully agree with you, Eric, when you say that. It is real weird that I feel like anytime the ball goes to Mitchell, it's like in no man's land from where he is. So there, there definitely some disconnect because it's now happened with two different quarterbacks. And we're seeing that this is not is not flying that way. So I don't know what it is. Yeah, I mean he's not getting an accurate ball some of him, but it, yeah. there's something underlined here that I don't think fans and you know people yeah. like us can just see, you know, with the naked eye on on TV or or at the stadium. It, it's just it's weird, man. Yeah. So, but he's a rookie. Uh, offensive line haven't really talked about. Got to be top one offensive line in in Been the NFL. That. Oh yeah, yeah, they're, they're so good. Um, it feels like each week somebody else has a standout week. Um, you know, because like Quinn Nelson probably didn't have the best day today, but I mean he's still playing at a great level. Tanner Bordellini got the start um, instead of Ryan Kelly, and for his first career start as a rookie, thought he played well. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't really see you know botch snaps or anything like that. So it's it's good that a center can step in because like you could have put somebody in like like Danny Pinter, um, who mm-hmm. who's had some you know uh, probably what 20, 30 games uh, experience, but instead you went with Tanner Bordellini. You saw something in him, and I'm glad you did. Uh, Braden Smith also didn't allow a sack against T.J. Watt. I'm if dude showed up. Yeah, I I thought I was I was wrong when I said that because he thought he was looking <laughs> at me crazy. But yeah, T.J. Watt did not have a sack, so Braden right. Smith has been elite against T.J. Sack or <laughs> T.J. Sack, <laughs> T.J. Watt <laughs> his almost his entire career. So shout out to this offensive line. Yeah, them dudes did what they needed to do, man. It was it was phenomenal to see. Um, I mean, again, they don't get enough credit for what they do day in and day out. They 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 really don't. Uh, I can talk about them all day, but just know they don't get the credit they deserve. They were able to rotate pieces in, and it still is a cohesive group, man. That, that, that tells you all you need to know about them and where they stand. What about this defense? What Oof. what can we say about them? They 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 stepped up today. I mean, let's, we, we got to say, they stepped up today. They played a hell of a first half. I mean, they played a hell of a, an entire game, but that first half was just something serious. EJ was all over the field. 12 solo tackles. I mean, come on. He was doing his thing. Zaire did his thing. He had six tackles. Nick Cross had yeah. seven tackles, even though I saw him miss one. But, I mean, I'm not tripping off that. But it was, it was like, ah, come on, Nick. But, I mean, these guys were everywhere, man. The, the run defense is phenomenal. What do they have total rushing yards? 122 with, I mean, and Justin Fields with 55. I mean, let, let's call it what we want to with that. It's hard to stop someone like Fields who, who we know can take off at any second. So, his 55 yards, does it stink that he got those? Sure. But to hold them to 122 when knowing that, you got Patterson, Harris, and Fields back there. I'll take that all day. So I've, I, I will say the defense did step up today for a majority of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but second half, the wheels started falling off, and I, mm-hmm. I felt like there was immense collapse uh, over there in the fourth quarter uh, with the Steelers scoring, you know, about two touchdowns apiece. Um, I j- – <laughs> These quarterbacks are going to have a field day against us as far as box score stats. I mean, this man threw for 312 yards. I don't think he's ever done that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah I didn't talk about the rushing yards. Yeah, yeah. He, he <laughs> yeah. threw for 312 yards, um, 10 carries, 55 yards. Like, he he had a great day mm-hmm. as, as far as numbers against us. Um, we did shut down Najee Harris. Cordero Patterson got a few good runs off. Um, I... I, I thought the defense was fine until the end. Like like you said, EJ Speed, he had a huge hit on Najee Harris at the beginning mm-hmm. of the game. Um, but like you said, Team High, 13 tackles, two tackles for a loss. Very good day for EJ Speed. Zaire Franklin had one of the best plays of the day on defense on a fourth and one uh, with that big hit on Justin Fields to, to get that stop. Uh, he came in like a fucking missile. Got to love it. Our linebackers are back to playing great football, so we like to see that. Um. Like you said, Nick Cross, I that was my boy. You know what? We hey, that was my boy coming into the season. You know, in lieu of signing Justin Simmons, I said Nick Cross is the guy. Yeah. So I 
I, I don't know how big of a fan you were of Nick Cross, but you know, I was a big Nick Cross fan. Dude was a Nick Cross fan and he got drafted. Then when he got benched last year, he was he uh, he was talking so much mad junk about Nick Cross. Now he's back on the Nick Cross train. Was not That's doing that. Crazy. That's a lie. So we're gonna have to get some uh recordings of that. Um Julian Blackman, uh great game from him. Uh let's talk about these corners like Jalen Jones. Uh I thought played pretty well. Um, but Sam Walmack. <laughs> I mean, did, did y'all even know who Sam Womack was before this game? <laughs> but is he is he CB one? Is is oh, he the greasy now? Oh boy, the Toledo legend, man. I I don't know, bro. No, I but, I can't. Uh, I listen. He did his thing, but I I can't. I I'm a big believer in not uh not giving people uh too much props after one one showing man made I, two I just said great that. play no Agreed. come on Agreed. man give him his props one. Jamal. yeah i'm giving him his him props, props but but should he be should he be the starting cornerback from here moving forward i mean that's what you're saying i mean one, one game set it all juju brents is out one game set it all. They say less, right? One game set it all. <laughs> hey, stamp it. Pay the man. Pay the man. We like our guys. Pay the man. <laughs> hey, let's see. He's he's definitely getting playing time early uh, oh, for sure. going forward. For sure. Let's see what he does against Jacksonville. But I as far as like the secondary, I know Justin feels through for that much, but when it mattered, our guys was making plays. Um of course, you know, guess Gus Bradley, fourth quarter hits. That man said, yo, yo step, yeah, yeah, <laughs> step back about 15 yards, maybe. So, you know, they're going to complete some passes yeah. against us. But when it mattered most, our guys was making plays. I like to see it. Um, D line came in with four sacks, uh, even with all the injuries. Uh, they came in. I know Dio had one and a half sacks. So, shout out to him. Dio Dingwo comes in. On those pass rushing plays, um, even Julian Blackman got got back there. So, <laughs> like our safety was coming back there. Um, so, gotta love it from these guys. Um, I, despite the score of the game and despite the wheels falling off, I, I feel like this defense had had a lot of good stuff going for them today. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, Matt Gay is cooked. Ah, oh, I was the only one you were gonna mention him. Uh, you what know, two years, twenty-four million. Still, bro, that's gonna be right and paying, be paying taxes on him for the foreseeable future, every month <laughs> or every paycheck, I guess. Not even every twice a month, I'm paying taxes on him. Matt Gay, man, I I don't know what to say. Like, he's just cooked. I I think you never pay a kicker, I, even even if we have bad kicker, you just just go get another one for like yep. half a mil. They're everywhere. They're literally They're, everywhere. Yeah, right? like you, you go get somebody off the couch. It it doesn't matter. But we will never pay a kicker again. I I, I hope not because has he made a fifty yarder? Mm, I don't know. Because I've watched plenty of games today where they were bombing fifty yards. <laughs> Young Way Koo was doing it. Eddie Pernario, whatever, off the Panthers. Like everybody was hitting fifty yarders except Matt Gay. That's guy one of the highest paid kickers in the league. Hey. That man is cooked. I am fully out on him. <laughs> if it is, if it, if it's above forty-five yards, I am shaking in my boots. Shane yeah. Sykes should just run the floor. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> fourth and one, fourth and seventeen. I don't give a shit, bro. Do not. <laughs> if it is a fifty-yard field goal, do not put that motherfucker in. I, I do not care anymore. I am out on him. He could hit ten straight. I don't care. <laughs> it's just like this. This is frustrating, Jamal. I, I know you don't care. There we go. <laughs> Yo, we, we we can't pay a cornerback or a safety or anything. We can go pay a kicker to go out yeah. there and miss. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it's, 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 un, it's, it's unacceptable. It's just unacceptable. made every extra point. I mean, that, there's something Ooh. there. So uh, that, It's just unacceptable, man. I mean, listen, they I, the one thing I will say about this organization, and I'm sure other organizations do it too, but I'm not all up in other organizations' grills like we are for the Colts, obviously. But I feel like there's always so much stuff that's hidden in this, in this organization. I feel like at the end of this year, we're going to hear about how Matt Gibbons was, was dealing with XYZ all year long, but they never want to say anything because blah, 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 blah. It's the same song and dance every year. Like I, I'm so tired of like the sneakiness behind it where you just have to hide every single thing. Clearly something's wrong with Matt Gay. There's something wrong. I don't know if it's mental or physical or a little bit of both, but something's not there. And at this point, like you said, Eric, we can't, we like, I mean, obviously we paid him so that, you know, it is what it is with that. 
Um, I don't know how much they would get because I don't know how much guaranteed he had and so on and so forth. But point is, is that there are other fish in the sea. And at some and at some point, Jamal, I think I think we just got to I, I don't know, man, because I, I just saw Jamal go out. But oh, yeah, at some point. Yeah, I just there's definitely a trend here. I yeah. mean, it's always wide left. Yeah, it's always wide left. Right. That's, that's I, all it is. Did he do something with his hair? Maybe like I don't know. Man, I don't know, man. I don't he, he know. Look, he looks a little blonder than usual. So I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing the misses though, because it's gonna we're gonna get more crunch games. I.e., probably next week we're gonna be in a situation where we need to hit a fifty bomb, a fifty yarder to tie up the game or take the lead or something. We we're gonna, we gonna give the Jags left. their first win of the season, and oh, we are gonna get cool. beat 35, 35 to zero. <laughs> Whenever we enter Jacksonville, it is completely over. There is downtown, <laughs> USA. We are playing against the Jacksonville Jaguars and the ghost of Tsushima. I, I don't know what is going on down there. <laughs> we, we need a neutral site. We got to have a neutral site or something. <laughs> yeah, they got to blow that stadium up. There has to be some <laughs> sabotage there for us to win. Hey, that's all I got, man. Yeah, that's it, man. Hey, don't pay Matt Gay anymore. Um, let's go out and get some other kickers in here and see what's going on. And uh, we, we already we already got him I on know, contract. He, I know, sick good for the season. You know, right if it was, the wheels fall off. That dog, if he would have missed that that thirty yarder, yeah, he he might have been the first kicker to ever get fired during the game, dog. Like you know, like, you, uh, know you know, you know, you know, they would have walked. The security would have walked that dude to the front, <laughs> bro. <laughs> At the end of the it, third, it, it say, leave, leave your leave, leave your cleats right here, dog. You don't need them no more. <laughs> yeah, take your helmet off. No, <laughs> I'll go give it to Brian Mason, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right, we got to stop, man. Yeah. Hey, look, that's going to be it for us, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Colts cast. We are live on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and platform you use to listen to podcasts. We'll be back next time to give you some more Indianapolis Colts content.